And we came in this space um, with the rich ideas about youth development that were coming in from some of the Commonwealth countries like uh, you know, Great Britain and Ireland and, and Australia and South Africa, uh, where, where, where there really was this idea that youth development was about helping young people be socially ready to step in to their adult roles. It wasn't about schooling. It wasn't about remediation. It really was about helping young people explore and build confidence that they really could be active contributors to their community. And it had an implicit equity piece to it, that it was especially mm -hmm. important for us to do this with young people who were marginalized. So we were bringing those ideas into the US. We went internationally and sort of brought those ideas back with us into the US. And they took more in these two spaces. And you mentioned both. One was really in sort of helping people move from prevention and remediation into really thinking about how to make sure young people were prepared and were really ready to be full participants. So that mm -hmm. phrase, problem free isn't fully prepared, um, that uh, I'm known for, uh, really sort of came through that focus on how we got folks in child welfare and juvenile justice and second chance programs to really not just see that their job was to help young people, to fix young people and get them back up to sort of, you know, point zero, but to actually get them fully prepared, fully ready, fully engaged. The second thing was exactly as you said, this idea that, that, that there was an intersection between youth development and community development mm -hmm. that was very intentional. So as we go back in, and I think one of the things that I will do now that I have more time, as Ian has said, is to really go back and read the things that we wrote 20 and 30 years ago because we had such a focus on this question of how young people, we even had this thing we call the double arrow, yeah. you know, youth supporting communities and community supporting youth. How does it go together? How mm -hmm. is this really this yin yang? And it's so critical to young people's development and, and definition of identity uh, and agency that we really focus on that. Um, but as we were doing that power of ideas um, and moving to set up the Forum for Youth Investment, um, and putting a board together that was really a board that had some of these national folks as well as uh, uh, local folks who were coming from some of the communities we were working in around this idea of youth action and youth agency. Um, there was a phrase that, that both of us remember that the board said to us, uh, and they said, this is great. You've got these ideas moving. You've got the plate spinning. We love the work that you're doing, but it's now time to get focused, get grounded, and get results. Uh, and so while I may be the person who's known for the bumper sticker phrases and sort of getting these ideas pushed down into a couple of words so that people can remember them, that charge from the board is really the charge that you took, took on and said, all right, how do we get this work focused and grounded? How do we get it down so that we are meeting leaders where they are and giving them ways to really move these ideas to accelerate progress? So what, what was that shift? What made it happen? How did you make it happen? What did that look like in the early years of the forum as we were getting grounded and getting focused to get results? Uh, I, I remember the phrase, I remember the meeting, Peter Edelman is yes. the one who actually said it to us uh, and, and, and said that the, these ideas are all great, but they've got to really land with people in places who are trying to get real things to happen um, and, and, and be informed by them. And how, and how, does, what, how, does, how does that happen? Um, in the, it really began over the probably the next a decade of different kinds of um, place-based learning groups, um, projects that really focused in on that really were the the working with the innovators in places um, that were doing this work, and and again having them um, inform the ide ideas as much as as us be able to, to share them. It was looking at their work and trying to crystallize it. I'm thinking of. Um, you mentioned the double arrows. I think another um, image that comes to mind is I think about the early days was the, the cube. Um, we had this, this cube that we used in the um, greater resources for after school programming project, right? So this was again going in on the, on the, in the community program space. Um, really actually at the time when the, um, a lot of the, the 21st century schools funding was coming in and there was a, there was a concern Again, echoes of the past in today. Of oh, there's about there's a lot of money that's about to come into communities. How does it lift up the work that's already happening and not somehow pave over it? Uh, and so there was actually some funding that we we got from um, one of the program officers, the Mott Foundation, to look at what are communities already doing in this space. How do we make sure that 
um, there are greater resources for after school programming, but they're also really understanding what it what what these emerging networks look like, what the concept, this is more at the center, but what the concept of intermediaries um, look like, what does it mean to have provider networks, how do you build kind of a um, infrastructure in this space, and, and with some of the, the early roots for some of the quality work that came later. Um, but to do this, this is um, what the journey with you has been like. I used, I know you alliterate, you all know you alliterate, um, but we also um, draw a lot of pictures. And this cube idea was really the beginnings of this, of this, um, this big picture thinking. What does it look like if you were trying to look at the life of a young person, which parents really look at the whole life of the young person, but if you're looking at the community level, how do you understand the whole experience from the time that children are little until they're big? So that was sort of zero to 21. We went to 21 to get it into the, to the next decade a little bit. What does that look like across morning until night, across all the, all the waking hours? and across the range of outcomes. So the problem free isn't fully prepared. We also said academics are important, but they're not enough. So how do you think about the academic and the vocational and, and the physical and emotional health um, and the social and civic engagement? What do all those things look like? If you took the age and the, um, and the, and the time of day and the outcomes, then you could start to see that it's, it was a patchwork quilt in terms of how you filled that in in communities that, that, um, that uh, that starting conversation of if we're really looking at all young people in our community, are they getting what they need? How that gets filled in looks very different for different young people, for different neighborhoods. Uh, and, it was, and it was really that conversation that came out of that that led into um, our, our um, sort of big picture ready by 21 work. 